every year once in the fall and then again in the summer in June, men's health comes to the spotlight. This is an important time to highlight issues that impact men and encourage them to visit their doctors. Joining us live now over Zoom is nurse practitioner Gary Walker with Baptist Health. Gary, thanks so much for joining us here on Alabama Live. It's my pleasure. During these hot summer months, a lot of men and a lot of us in general struggle with hydration. Talk about what we can do to stay hydrated and stay safe. Well, first I recommend, you know, a typical 64, 72 ounces of water per day. Um, that's very important just to keep the body hydrated. One of the things we do see an uptick during the summer months, and a lot of it is due to hydration, is kidney stones. And one of the major reasons kidney stones form is dehydration. So the adequate oral uh, intake daily is very important, not just for your overall health, but also to help prevent uh, kidney stones. Do you think we see more kidney stones in the South because of how hot it gets here? Well, the, the two big reasons we see a lot of stones here in the South, probably more so than elsewhere, is one, the dehydration effect, and also the drinking of tea, not just necessarily sweet tea, but tea has uh, a lot of oxalate in it, and I'd say 80, 85% of stones are calcium oxalate in composition. So what you, if you have a large tea consumption and you're also getting dehydrate, dehydrated, you're really setting yourself up just for some kidney stones. Gary, you know we love our sweet tea here in the deep south. Oh, I know. <laughs> How does that hydration roll over into urology? Well, as I said, one of our focuses is the treatment of kidney stones. And we see a very big uptick in that during the summer months. And a lot of that is, as we say, has contributed to more dehydration than anything. But a lot of the folks and patients I treat, they, they will tell me, yes, I drink a large amount of tea during the day or even sodas, but tea more importantly. Um, and we, tr we try to say, hey, look, don't cut out your tea altogether. Hey, I'm from the South. I cannot cut out tea altogether but you know, kind of minimize how much you do drink. Gary, when we talk about men's health, we hear a lot about prostate cancer as well. It's one of the most common types of cancer in men. Why is it so important to visit a doctor and at what age should you start making appointments and talking about prostate cancer? Well, a lot of that depends on, you know, you know do you have a risk factors like family you know, lineage where you know, your grandfather, dad, or brother had prostate cancer. We know that you're at a higher risk when that occurs. So, uh, some of the key things with prostate cancer is, if, you know, if you have a family history of it, you should probably start earlier, say around 40 or 45, starting to be screened yearly or every couple years. Um, other than that, 45 to 50 is a good age to start typically. Uh, a lot of gentlemen we talk with here in the office they've kind of shot away from wanting to have their prostates evaluated and checked routinely. And I think a lot of that has to do with some of the old school digital rectal exams, which we still do, but I think that kind of scares some of them off, honestly. But the PSA is, is a great test we have nowadays. It's a blood test, it's a simple lab draw, and it's very good at helping us screen and diagnose you know, potential prostate cancers. Gary, why is it harder, it seems like, in general, to get men to the doctor, whether it's about prostate health or anything? You know, I, I, well, let's face it, some of us guys, we're, we're kind of stubborn at times. And I think a lot of it has to do with two, health literacy. I don't think that we've really done a great job of explaining to the public how important this is and how easily treatable prostate cancer is if it's detected early and treated early. However, if you allow it to continue, uh, it becomes much more difficult in the treatment phase. And I think we as healthcare providers have probably not done a great job overall in educating the public about this. Gary, we talked about kidney stones, we talked about prostate cancer. What are some of the other issues you see a lot of men in the South facing? Uh, we, we see BPH is one of them. Um, and that that is, affects a lot of guys, especially as you get older, the prostate naturally will just increase in size at times. And one of the things we see with men is the, as the prostate gets bigger, it makes it a little more difficult for a man to urinate. Uh, you have to picture like the prostate is a, as an orange, if you will, with sections. And through the middle of that runs the urethra, which is where the urine travels from the bladder to outside the body. So over time, certain sections of the prostate can become a little large and kind of compress on that urethra, making it more difficult to urinate. And some of the challenges we see is it, this does not happen usually overnight. It's kind of a slow, steady progress. 
and you don't really notice it, or one day you wake up and you're having a lot of trouble urinating. So there is some medications we can help with that, as well as some surgical procedures that are very effective in treating more advanced cases of this. All right, Gary, how can people get in touch with you in your office? Well, I think you had our number up on the board there for a second. Uh, yes, just give us a give us a call at the UAB Multi Specialty Clinic. Our number is 334-747-7070. We have three offices uh, with clinic availability. We have one here at Baptist South, one at Baptist East, and also in Prattville. We also have surgical opportunities uh, at Baptist South and Baptist East if needed. All right, Gary, a lot of good information this morning. Thanks so much for joining us here on Alabama Live. You're more than welcome. Thank you for having me.